Aggression versus effective action. The aggressive person is rarely in full control. He cannot see more than a couple of moves ahead, cannot see the consequences of this bold move or that one, because he's constantly being forced to react to the moves of his ever-growing host of enemies and to the unforeseen consequences of his own rash actions. In the end, his aggressive energy is turned against him. Aggressive action does not mean it's effective. It does not mean it's efficient. It does not mean it will work. Just because your aggressive emotions and actions give you the feeling you're in control does not make it true in reality. Usually this is a self-constructed illusion that gives us a false sense of control and security. Law 8. Make other people come to you. Use bait if necessary. When you force the other person to act, you are the one in control. It is always better to make your opponent come to you, abandoning his own plans in the process. Lure him with fabulous gains, then attack. You hold the cards. Three key rules to control. The first one, know how to lure your target. When luring others, you must appeal to their self-interest. Find their motivations and weaknesses. Put yourself in their position and give them what they want. Make them an offer they can't refuse. You really just have to know what kind of bait you're going to prepare. Find that bait you just know they can't resist. Be it a promise of conquest, revenge, welfare, riches, safety or love and watch as they slowly come to you and walk right into the palm of your hands. It's as if they pick up and attach the strings themselves. Make them abandon their own plans and suddenly you become the one controlling the situation. The second one, make them believe that they are in control. Manipulation is a dangerous game. Once someone suspects he's being manipulated, it becomes harder and harder to control him. But when you make your opponent come to you, you create the illusion that he is controlling the situation. People won't suspect they are being manipulated if they feel like they are in control. In December of 1936, the communists captured the Chinese nationalist general Chiang Kai-shek and threw him in prison. Zhou Enlai, a former friend and now a communist leader, asked the general to stop the attack on the Chinese communist army that were almost annihilated and join forces with them to defend China against the invading Japanese forces. Shang hated the communists, to sign an agreement with the communists in these circumstances he yelled would be humiliating and would lose me all honor among my own army. It's out of the question, kill me if you must. Zhou listened and told the nationalist general that a concern for honor was something he understood, but that the honorable thing for them to do was actually to forget their differences and fight the invader. Finally, Zhou said that whatever his decision may be was that under no circumstances would he allow his fellow communists, or anyone for that matter, to execute such a great man as Chiang Kai-shek. The nationalist leader was stunned and moved. The next day, Shang was escorted out of prison by communist guards, transferred to one of his own army planes, and sent back to his own headquarters. A few months later, Shang signed an agreement to halt the civil war and join with the communists against the Japanese. He seemed to have come to his decision on his own, and his army respected it. Working together, the nationalists and the communists expelled the Japanese from China. Interpretation the capture of Chiang Kai-shek was a turning point in the civil war. To execute him might have been disastrous. It had been Chiang who had held the nationalist army together, and without him it could have broken up into factions, allowing the Japanese to overrun the country. To force him to sign an agreement would not have helped either. He would have lost face before his army and would never have honored the agreement. Zhou worked on Chiang perfectly, paying him respect, playing the inferior, making him feel in control. Zhou knew all this would soften him up, planting the seed of the idea that perhaps the communists were not so bad after all and that he could change his mind about them without looking weak. Once the Japanese had left, Zhou and the communist army turned on the nationalists who in 1949 were forced to evacuate China for the island of Formosa, now Taiwan. Rule 3. Master emotions. Never be influenced by your emotions. Learn how to keep composure. Emotional people are never in control. You should, however, play on people's natural tendency to react emotionally when pushed and baited. The key is to make other people emotional while you remain detached. Learn how to make people feel grateful, happy, angry, arrogant. Whatever emotion you need them to feel to manipulate them, an emotional person is a distracted person. Reversal. Although it is generally the wiser policy to make others come to you, 
There are opposite cases where striking suddenly and aggressively at the enemy so demoralizes him that his energies sink. Instead of making others come to you, you go to them. Force the issue. Take the lead. With no time to think, people make errors of judgment. This tactic is the obverse of waiting and baiting, but it serves the same function. You make your enemy respond on your terms. Choose your approach wisely. Thank you.